and it's now five o'clock. It's Monday, the 30th of May. This is BBC Radio Wales Drive. I'm Oliver Hyde, and our top stories. A drink driver who killed two children in a crash near Newport won't have his jail term reviewed by the Court of Appeal. And French authorities have blamed Liverpool fans with forged tickets for the scenes before Saturday's Champions League final. More on those stories to come, but also coming up, pasta, rice and bread. The biggest price rises revealed as one supermarket chain says they fear a rise in shoplifting. So those stories on the way. Let's get the news now with Dan Welsh. Thanks, Ollie. Good evening. A drink driver who killed two children in a crash near Newport won't have his jail term reviewed by the Court of Appeal. Three-year-old Jaden Lee Lucas and his sister Gracie Ann, who was four, died after the collision on the M4 in February. Martin Newman pleaded guilty to two counts of causing death by dangerous driving and was jailed for nine years and four months. The children's family had criticised the sentence, but a request for it to be reviewed under the unduly lenient sentence scheme has been refused. There were growing calls for an investigation into the way Liverpool fans were treated at Saturday's Champions League final in Paris after police used tear gas and pepper spray on them going into and coming out of the match. A Downing Street spokesman described the footage from the Stade de France as deeply upsetting and disturbing. The French authorities have continued to blame fake tickets, which they say were being sold on an industrial scale. The BBC's Hugh Schofield, who's outside the Stade de France, says that authorities have admitted some blame. They're admitting that there were problems in directing fans to the stadium because one of the underground lines was down with a strike, which meant that they all went through one station, which meant there was congestion here, which should have been foreseen. They admit there there were problems with policing, that there was indiscriminate use of pepper spray, which was largely caused by the fact that into the Liverpool fans had come hundreds of local youths who were bent on, as we've heard, pillaging and robbing. The former Attorney Attorney General Jeremy Wright has joined the list of Conservative MPs demanding Boris Johnson resign following the Sue Gray report on parties at Downing Street. A total of 26 Tory MPs have now publicly called for the Prime Minister to quit. Nearly 3,000 emergency workers in Wales faced verbal abuse or were kicked, punched or spat at last year. The number of assaults on staff rose by 5% on the previous year. Sonia Thompson is the Assistant Director of Operations with the Welsh Ambulance Service and says these incidents can delay response times. Having that altercation, whether it be on the phone or on the scene, it will delay us even more coming and I don't think that's that's something that is widely understood. Being verbally aggressive to a call handler, for example, you know, we're not able to get to the gist of the reason why that person is calling if that if that kind of altercation is continuing. So in fact it could delay treatment or as attending. Data from the Office for National Statistics has shown the cost of some of the cheapest food basics has risen steeply. The price of pasta jumped by 50% in the year to April, while other household staples such as minced beef, bread and rice also showed large increases. A Senate committee has backed proposals to increase the number of politicians in Cardiff Bay from 60 to 96. The plans had been put forward by the Welsh Labour government and Plaid Cymru. The Committee on Senate Reform is also recommending reforming the voting system and introducing agenda quotas. More from our political reporter, Kemlin Davis. This report agrees with the arguments put forward by Labour and Plaid Cymru earlier this month that the Senate's increased powers mean it needs more MSs. And it backs the idea of dividing Wales into 16 constituencies, with each one represented by six members, elected via a form of proportional representation. According to the committee's chair, Hewer Anka Davis, the Welsh Government must now act quickly to bring forward the necessary legislation. Some senior Conservatives who oppose the idea of more MSs have said any expansion plans should be put to a public vote. But Mr Ranka Davis dismissed that idea, adding that Senate reform had featured in three of the party's election manifesto. Europe's largest youth festival, the Year Thy Southfard, has been getting underway today near Denby. It's taken place online for the past two years because of the pandemic. The organisation is celebrating its 100th anniversary. Sport now, and Wales winger Wes Burns is hoping he'll be third time lucky in winning his first cap for Wales, having been so close in the past. He's back in Robert Page's squad for the first time since 2016, and is hoping to win his first senior cap in the upcoming June international fixtures. And in the French Open tennis, world number one Iga Swiatek has started her last 16 match versus China's Chi Wen Zhang. Swiatek has managed to break serve and currently leads the first set by three games to love. BBC Radio Wales, for an update any time, ask your smart speaker to play BBC News for Wales. It's five minutes past five. 
Thank you very much, Dan, and welcome one and all. This is BBC Radio Wales Drive. I'm Oliver Hydes, and coming up on the programme, calls for a review of the traffic chaos around Ed Sheeran's shows in Cardiff. The council is planning for a new arena, for instance, uh, down in Cardiff Bay. Uh, There's no point putting millions into a new arena if you're going to develop a reputation as a city that can't handle large-scale events and therefore people don't want to come. A former leader of Cardiff Council tells us that mistakes were made in the event planning and French authorities continue to blame Liverpool fans for the scene to the Champions League final in Paris on Saturday night. I turned up unbelievably early and so did a lot of my friends who then went on to be tear gassed and pepper sprayed around the ground and then some of the same people were tear gassed, pepper sprayed and hit with batons after the game as well. More coming up on that story and also before six, how a seagull has put a stop to half-term fun in Aberavon. Oliver Hyde on BBC Radio Wales. Let's begin, though, with the chaos around some parts of uh, South Wales over the weekend. Maybe you were caught up in it. Uh, maybe you were on your way to the Ed Sheeran concert or My Chemical Romance. Uh, maybe you had to change your plans because of it. But there have been calls today for a review into how parts of South Wales became gridlocked over the weekend as people tried to get to Cardiff. Uh, Ed Sheeran was playing the last of three sold-out shows at the Principality Stadium on Saturday night. And emo rockers My Chemical Romance were performing at Sophia Gardens. And there have been reports of people really struggling to get to both shows by road and rail uh, with long delays to get home again. Susie Andrew, for example, from Sandhurst in Berkshire, spoke to Claire on BBC Radio Wales Breakfast this morning. She was stuck in traffic for so long, she missed Ed Sheeran's entire show and questioned whether Cardiff was equipped to stage such large-scale events. We got to within three miles of the Seven Bridge and it became very apparent we were going to miss the support up, but that was OK because we'd still get to the ad. And then it took us three hours. I just go to say how much I... Pring and Debbie Warder had their flights with EasyJet cancelled while they were at the gate. They've been speaking to the BBC's Dave Harvey. Literally a few few minutes when we got there, it was in the, the boarding gate, it was um, about three or four minutes, yeah. and it was just an announcement saying, sorry, your flight's cancelled, no explanation, nothing. The Earth has visited the Vale of Cloyd. Uh, the Earth's chief executive, uh, Sean Lewis, uh, is with us now. Joins us now from the Mice. Uh, good evening to you, Sean. Hello, Shamai Planta. Good to be back, wasn't it? I'm sure it must have been. Well, yes, it's a huge relief for us after three years uh, to be back in Denby with all the local enthusiasm that has been creating the Estadvod for our young people to enjoy face-to-face at last in a field. How's the muscle memory? How has it been over the past few weeks in terms of remembering what, what, you do, what you've been doing every year and it becomes natural and suddenly you've got to stop and think about it a bit, have you? Yeah, well, not really. We've got dedicated staff that have worked, you know, tirelessly throughout the year to make sure that this week is really, you know, the best um, performance of we can put on for the Eisteddfod. And not forgetting local volunteers that have raised 300,000. Nine Celsius. Tomorrow, a mixture of sunny intervals and showers, heavy in places with thunder. But during the afternoon, the showers will ease with increasing amounts of sunshine and temperatures higher than today, 13 to 17 Celsius, with a light to moderate breeze. OK, so it's an improving picture then. We'll take that, Derek. Thank you very much uh, to uh, to Derek Brockway. Thanks to all of you for listening. Claire's back tomorrow morning from six o'clock with Radio Wells Breakfast, looking ahead to the big announcement of the City of Culture. Wrexham in the running, of course. That's tomorrow evening, and we'll update you on that as well, of course, here on BBC Radio Wells Drive tomorrow. But now, from all of us, from the whole team, have a lovely evening. Bye-bye. <laughs> Good evening. Comedy now on BBC Radio Wales as Tom Price welcomes a live audience to The Leak from the Hay Festival. Hello and welcome along to The Leak with me, Tom Price, recorded live at the Hay Festival with a real-life audience who sound a little bit like this. (laughs) Oh, amazing, amazing! Thank you, Hay! And now let's get a cheer from the people here who actually live in Hay. Here we go, it's The Leak! (laughs) Welcome 
back, one and all. My name is Tom Price and this is The Leak on BBC Radio Wales. And joining me today to have a good old look at that news, we've got Jason Byrne, Ian Stone and Jambi McGrath. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. 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 So good to see you all here. Let's just do a big uh, practice uh, clap and cheer. So this is an important part of the show as well. So we're going to start over here. <laughs> 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 What's really pleasing is every time you do that, people walking past and in the queue are all like, what's going on over there? Yeah. And they look really annoyed like they haven't come. I just want to do it once. So this is just for my own amusement. So on three, like this is, the, you cannot believe you've got tickets to this event. It's incredible. One, two, three, go now. Okay, good. That is kind of, that is kind of, look, people are coming in because you did that. Maybe they should just start shouting Hillary at us because she's, <laughs> Hillary Clinton's coming here on the Sunday, so yeah. they might think that she's actually here now. That's an amazing yeah. idea. You just keep going, Hillary, Hillary, a question, please, That's right. Bill. Ladies and please welcome to the stage, Hillary Clinton. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs>